a story of a young man named Yan Jin. It is known that when he woke up from sleep, he suddenly woke up and was in a forest where at that time it was still in the primitive era. Yan Jin, currently without wearing any clothes, was in a forest filled with ancient animals, and while he lived there, he began his life as a primitive person in general, starting from him experiencing civilization, friendship, freedom, and so on. And it is known that everyone there is always blessed and always feels happy with their life. They live in peace and work with joy. And besides, even though they are categorized as primitive people, but they also follow developments in science. On the other hand, one thing that has become a principle for them is not to believe in supernatural things. Then after that, Yan Jin said that his life began when he caught a big fish in the morning, play with some big cats. And at night, he watched a light show of fireworks and countless artistic performances. Apart from that, he also saw several cavemen enthusiastically demonstrating their actions in lifting quite large rocks. And after that, it made Yan Jin think, with a life like that, it's very relaxing. However, one-day activities like that made Yan Jin very bored. Furthermore, it is known that in primitive societies, survival of the fittest is the key to survival. However, by looking at conditions like that, looks like things aren't so bad here. However, with conditions like that in the primitive era, Yan Jin couldn't even find chili here. But on the other hand, at least in primitive society, there were so many berries that he could use to make good wine. When Yan Jin used the newly made wine to cook his special fried fish, the local flavors and the wine mixed. And that attracts the attention of other wild animals. And it was discovered that Yan Jin could use the animal's flesh to catch fish. When Yan Jin was cooking the food he mentioned before, a large wild beast smelled it. And Yan Jin was very proud to be able to get such prey. After that, the beast heads towards the hunter, but soon falls into a hole filled with leaves and sticks. Then after that, Yan Jin walked to the hole where the beast had fallen and thought that this huge animal reminded him very much of a saber-toothed tiger. Then Beast angrily asked, how dare someone like Yan Jin attack him? And after that, Yan Jin was surprised that this huge beast could also talk. Then after that, Yan Jin told the saber-toothed tiger his name and said that he was an engineer named Yan Jin. Yan Jin remembered how he first came to this strange place. And now he caught a saber-toothed tiger with his own hands, who also knew how to talk. Then, after that, the saber-toothed tiger struggled to get out of that deep hole. Yan Jin thought that all his efforts would be unsuccessful, and he would fall again and again. But everything turned out to be completely different from what Yan Jin had imagined. Suddenly, the saber-toothed tiger ran and jumped so high that it flew right above him. Yan Jin couldn't believe that this tiger could jump so high. Then, Yan Jin saw that the mighty saber-toothed tiger Mudaka was trying to escape while deciding to tempt him with spring food. And Yan Jin handed over to the saber-toothed tiger as delicious food and freshly cooked wine. But after that, Yan Jin said that for the sake of meat and wine, the saber-toothed tiger would not kill him, but it will save him. Then the saber-toothed tiger relaxed its guard, and Yan Jin dispatched it and decided to attack and escape. Yan Jin grabbed the rope and tried to tie the mudaka, then grabbed the big fish and ran. But after that, the mudaka shouted at Yan Jin not to run away from him. But Yan Jin was not ready to say goodbye to his life and told the saber-toothed tiger about it. When Yan Jin ran up the cliff, the saber-toothed tiger suddenly asked Yan Jin to stop again. But this time his voice sounded more threatening, and Yan Jin stood at the edge of the cliff and held the big fish above his head with both hands. Yan Jin asked the saber-toothed tiger, would she believe him if he said he could fly? Then after that, the tiger replied that Yan Jin should try and jump right at him. By the time the saber-toothed tiger flew through the air in a leap, Yan Jin had already successfully jumped down from the cliff with the fish at the edge of the cliff. Then after that, the tiger stopped and looked down. Yan Jin flew with his homemade wings and smiled at his victory. And in the end, Yan Jin shouted that the saber-toothed tiger should not believe him. Previously, Yan Jin was holding a big fish above his head. He told the tiger that he could fly, and he asked him if he didn't believe that. However, the tiger challenged him and told him to try it. However, at the same time, the saber-toothed tiger flew by its collar and saw Yan Jin flying. At the same time, 
the Mudaka finally took on a different appearance and turned into a human. She is a young and beautiful girl. He angrily saw Yan Jin running away and thought that next time, he would not miss such an opportunity and would catch him. Then after that, an army of people came to the girl with two large animals with horns and three pairs of eyes. Mudaka gave them all the order to stop. Then the girl threw a rope similar to a vine and hooked it to the tree. Then he flew into the air and landed on a tree branch. But after that, the girl began to observe several settlements and asked the people what kind of place it was. Then one of the people answered that it was just a small Yan clan. The girl fought for a while and then told everyone that they would be going to the Yan clan soon, and Yan Jin finally returned to his Yan clan. Then after that, you can see that he is standing while looking at the sky and saw birds flying nearby, and a big fish was lying nearby. Then after that, suddenly a huge rhinoceros with three pairs of eyes approached Yan Jin. Yan Jin carefully examined the animal and wondered where this huge rhinoceros came from. Then a man with a spear approached Yan Jin and asked why he came back so late and then told him that the clan had good news. Yan Jin was a little surprised by such words and did not answer the question he had just asked. It turned out that today, the Hagalu from the big tribes together with Yan Kai had personally come to hold the awakening ceremony. Then Yan Jin accidentally heard one of his clan members ask the person who told Yan Jin everything, why he did that, because Yan Jin was not that old. In response, the person heard that even though Yan Jin was only 12 years old, he was still an integral part of the Yan clan, so it would be great to let him watch this ceremony in person. The clan's residents huddled around an animal called the Bighorn Deer. Everyone was surprised that there was indeed a Bighorn Deer in front of him. They were among the crowd saying that this was what was expected of Elder Huey's grandson, Ian Huey. Everyone thought that this time the awakening would still happen. People were confused because the bighorn deer was quite strong. Then the sound of voices from the crowd was heard again. Then after that, someone said that Yan Hui had been raised by a great elder since childhood. So he might even be able to be in there. Gulu Yan Jin stood behind the crowd and thought about what kind of value this horned deer had and what great power this had. Then the fat man who caught him after some time, the grandson of the second elder Yan Yang appeared and brought the defeated big horn goat. Everyone gathered around and began discussing roughly what had happened and said that even two or even three people couldn't catch it. Big horn goat, but everyone understood very well that Yan Yang, the grandson of the second elder, his abilities were not inferior to the grandson of the first elder Yan Huey. Someone said that maybe Yan Yang could become better than Huey so that his clan would become better. Can rely on it in the future, then the deputy captain of the Yan Lun hunting team came and called Yan Yang and Yan Hui to him. Captain Yan Long said that Yan Yang and Hui must put on an excellent performance like the awakening ceremony. It was very important at this time that Captain Yan Long added that the big Hagulu had personally sent the Hahoku to the Si Yan Yong was very surprised after Captain Yan Long's words and asked, Hakuko will come, the deputy captain of the hunting team did not answer Yan Yong's question, but just saying that he and Hue have to work hard and try to get back on their feet. At this time, Yan Jin was standing behind the captain and heard everything he said to Yan Yong and Yan Hui. Suddenly Yan Long Capital felt Yan Jin's presence behind him and turned around. Yan Jin greeted Uncle Long politely, and with a smile on his face, Captain Yan Long walked towards Yan Jin and patted him on the shoulder, then said that Yan Jin had a very strong father whom he never hunted down, but the stone tools he made were the best, therefore vice captain. He advised Yan Jin to watch the awakening ceremony very carefully because Yan Jin definitely, according to others, had inherited the great glory of his father, and Yan Jin himself understood this very well. Suddenly someone heard loud footsteps. Yan Jin and Yan Long looked and saw a giant, bulging man carrying a large stone pillar on his shoulder. Yan Jin asked what happened, but Vice Captain Yan Lung did not answer the question asked like that. Then a man with a pole on his shoulder walked between them and stuck a pipe into the ground. However. Yan Jin could only think that this stone pillar must be very heavy. Then the man lifted the pole again and put it in place. And Yan Jin saw his back, which had some kind of bear painted on it. The man with the bear on his back lifted him. 
The column went up in the air again, and he jumped from the ground onto it. The crowd was shocked, but watched the spectacle with great interest. So the man set some columns straight into the ground, so the ground at the beginning of the column flew away from the crowd and started shouting words of support to this man, and he was still standing on one of the stone pillars, shouting something about the ancestral gods from above and totems shining forever. And Yan Jin looked at him and wondered if this man was even human. The man asked Yen to bring all the children from the age of fifteen, and then he would be able to hold the awakening ceremony. The old man answered that it would be a great honor for them if such a great and powerful man, a totem warrior, would perform the awakening ceremony. Yan Jin was shocked when he heard about the warrior totem. Then Yan Jin looked at his hands and thought that the body he was in now was only twelve years old. It seemed like he would have to wait another three years to meet the requirements. Ian gathered all the children of that age. The totem warriors began to tell them that as they knew, they would be able to protect their clan only if they became strong totem warriors. He said that a clan can be strong and prosperous only if the clan has a strong totem warrior. Only the strongest totem warrior can use his power to fight the darkness. He said that they would all make great totem warriors. Yan Jin thought of the words of the totem warrior of darkness about the powerful totem power. He decided that there were a lot of components, so it was better for him to just observe. Then at this time, a totem warrior told him that this Yan clan's totem was fire. The warrior says that he will direct the power of fire to the totem to help all these people awaken. If the awakening is successful according to the signs, a special warrior totem must appear on the person's body. The totem warrior said that he hopes that among all these people there is at least one person who can awaken this according to him is the only way for them to become a totem warrior. After these words, the soldier announces the start. The people stand in the center of the columns placed in a circle, and the soldier directs the fire. Yan Jin saw everything that was going on and thought that this totem warrior was probably giving it his all, and not even afraid of burning and dying. Clan leader Yang Yan stood beside the elder. Senior Yan Liu and second elder Yanni said that it had been a full five years, but the Yan clan had not managed to awaken anyone. Second elder Yanni said that he hoped that either Quick or Yan Yang would succeed, and so it happened that both Yan Quick and Yan Yang succeeded. Senior elder Yan Lu shouted for everyone to see immediately that both of them had succeeded. He was happy that now, from now on, their clan had a successor. The Yan clan leader was also happy about this event, and enthusiastically shouted, that he saw everything perfectly right now. Yan Jin stood behind everyone, and thought that all these people were not materialistic at all, because awakening had absolutely nothing to do with the gods. Unexpected for everyone, some strange, incomprehensible thing flew out from the place where the totem warrior was, and headed straight for Yan Jin. And Yan Jin was frightened and covered himself with his hands to protect himself from the blow. There was a bright flash of light, but Yan Jin was not hit by this. Strange things began to swirl around Yan Jin. It turned out that Yan Jin was the third person who was able to wake up. The head of the clan looked at Yan Jin in surprise and enthusiastically talked about how their clan had finally developed. And senior elder Yan Liu couldn't even say anything as one of these strange things entered Yan Jin's body and he stood shocked and did not understand what was happening at all. The totem warrior frowned at Yan Jin and said that he had never seen such a firelight. Before he asked Yan Jin to release the flames and let him take a look, but Yan Jin didn't understand what was wrong and whether it was some kind of problem, and Yan Jin then asked what it meant to release his fire and how he could do it. The totem warrior looked at the others who were able to get up and said that Yan Jin should have done the same as they did. He had to control the power of the totem and then be able to release the flames and Yan Jin scratched his head and said he didn't know how to do it. So an elder intervened in the conversation and told the totem warrior that Yan Jin was just a twelve-year-old child. He hadn't reached the age required for awakening, so he couldn't do whatever the totem warriors asked of him afterward. That clan head turned towards Yan Jin and told him that he just needed to close his eyes and clear his mind. The clan head said that Yan Jin had just released his flames, and he should try doing it again. Then he definitely would. It worked, and Yan Jin agreed to try. He concentrated on closing his eyes and trying to clear his mind. 
Then Yan Jin opened his eyes, but found himself in a place completely foreign to him. Before he heard a strange sound, but didn't know what kind of sound it was. Where it was and where it came from, Yan Jin then looked around and saw a huge black hole. Then after that, it was currently visible that Yan Jin seemed to be sucked into this enormous black hole. And after some time, he finally came to his senses and opened his eyes. Then after that, he was currently in the real world. The totem warrior asked him if he could feel the flame, and Yan Jin answered that he didn't feel anything. Then the head of the An clan intervened and grabbed Yan Jin by the collar, starting to shout that this couldn't be happening because they saw everything perfectly with their own eyes. Eyes, but Yan Jin still insisted that he didn't feel anything at all. When the head of the An clan finally let go of Yan Jin, the totem warrior asked if Yan Jin felt anything strange. There was no fire or other totems. Then Yan Jin asked if that was true. Assumes that he has seen a black hole and the totem warrior asks him, what is a black hole? Totem warrior asked Yan Jin what a black hole was. Yan Jin tried to explain as clearly as possible that a black hole is something that can absorb anything. Ian Young looked at Yan Jin with a sullen face and asked what other black hole he was talking about. He asked for sure if Yan Jin felt anything and expressed his doubts that Yan Jin could wake up at all. Then after that, Anne Huey, who was standing behind Yan Yang, said it was probably true that Yan Jin didn't wake up, and everything that happened recently probably happened just by accident. Then other people who were standing nearby and heard the whole conversation also expressed their doubts about Yan Jin's awakening. Some people said that they had never heard of blue flames before. So Yan Jin's awakening raised doubts in other people from the crowd, saying that Yan Jin was only a 12-year-old child. He was still too young to awaken. Then other people answered their words that it could be a divine gift from the gods. Senior Elder Yan Liu turned to the clan head and said that the flames on Yan Jin's body were very strange and asked Aguila if it had something to do with darkness. Then the second Elder Yeni intervened and said that Yan Jin was talking about some kind of black hole, therefore, according to Yani, Yan Jin must be at least somehow connected to the darkness. Then the head of the Yan clan turned to Huhuka the totem warrior and said that they were very stupid and asked him to guide them on the right path. Then the Enlightenment Fuhuka scrunched up his face angrily and said that he had never been in a situation like this before. Throughout their lives, if it had anything to do with darkness, then they had to take action. He who heard their every word again started to light up convincing everyone that he saw absolutely nothing, that there were no black holes at all, and that they could believe him. If they wanted to, or they might not believe it, then Yan Jin said that it was time for him to go and was about to leave, but Hu Hika told him to stand still and swung at Yan Jin with his hands jumping at him and wanting to hit him. But suddenly someone ordered Hu Hika to stop, and he didn't have time to hit Yan Jin. His hand froze right next to his face. Everyone turned towards the sound and saw a saber-toothed tiger. It was the same Mudaka that Yan Jin had met. Before the saber-toothed tiger slowly headed towards the crowd, Yan Jin looked at the Mudaka in surprise and didn't understand why this saber-toothed tiger looked so familiar when the Mudaka took human form and turned into a girl. Yan Jin shouted that it might be a demon and jumped right into the totem. This girl warrior was a Mudaka from the human king tribe. He approaches Yan Jin, who is still afraid of him, and says that they finally met again. At this time, an old wizard who was sitting on a mountain was watching everything that happened with him was a young man, who was his student, who was shocked. Because Yan Jin's fire first appeared, and then disappeared again, the old shaman said that this invisible fire was like a fish that was not caught, or land that could not be reached. Then the old man said that the prophecy was about the chosen man. It's finally starting to become a reality. A man standing nearby. It asks how could that happen? The truly chosen one in this small and remote Ian tribe, the old witch didn't answer. However, it just stood up and said that they had to go. Now he opened the portal, and they both entered it. Then the girl got closer to Yan Jin and asked what his name was, and Yan Jin introduced himself. Then the girl asked if he knew who he was, and Yan Jin answered that she knew he was a mighty Nudaka. 
The girl looks at him with an angry face and asks if he knows who she is, then why can't she guess what he is going to do to her? Yan Jin jerked away from the girl in fear, and then said that he wasn't quite sure what the mighty Mudaka would do to him, but he was very afraid that he would not be able to take revenge. Grandpa Aluba The girl asked who Grandpa Alubu was, who was the head of the Yan clan, and senior elder Yan Liu also didn't know who Grandpa Alubu was. But they knew for sure that this person was not from their clan. Then Yan Jin decided to tell everyone about who this grandfather Alubu was. Han Jin said that Grandpa Lubu was a very kind person who lived in the mountains, and Yan Jin also told him about how he once went to the mountains. And during a dangerous situation, Alubu Hussein's grandfather saved his life. Among other things, Yan Jin said that no matter what, Grandpa Lubu still treated him well every time they met. Grandpa Lubu would tell him about some of the animals he had worked so hard to hunt with Yan Jin. Then Yan Jin added that about a month ago, Grandpa Alubu saved a white tiger for his sake. He went hunting every day regardless of how the weather was outside. The girl looked at Yan Jin with surprise and listened attentively to Yan Jin's story, along with everyone else. And Yan Jin continued to talk and say that this disgusting tiger not only did not have the slightest gratitude, the day the tiger recovered and realized he had eaten Grandpa Luba. But the elders didn't see this as a problem at all. The two Yin elders told the head of the Yan clan that Grandfather Alubu was apparently a very noble person and that it was probably the fault of the Yan clan. But the Yan clan head just laughed and said with a frown that he was a good person. Senior elder Yan Liu added that they were very sorry. But the expression on his face spoke of complete indifference to Grandpa Alubu's fate. Yan Jin continued to tell how it was two days ago. He went looking for Grandpa Lupa, but only found his skeleton and traces of the beast that killed Grandpa Luba. Then Yan Jin clenched his fists, clenched his fists and said that after that he swore he would avenge Grandpa Aluba and kill this bloodthirsty white tiger in front of the clan. Anne said that it was true, and Yan Jin had to take revenge on the beasts for Grandpa Alubu's death and senior elder Yan Liu added that the Yan clan chief was indeed right about this, and Yan Jin must avenge Grandpa Alubu. The girl first looked at the head of the Yan clan and senior elder Yan Liu, then turned his gaze towards Yan Jin and asked, if the reason he attacked him was because he was trying to avenge Grandpa Alubu's death. Then the elder was shocked by what he heard, and wondered how Yan Jin could attack the great Mudaka senior. Elder Yan Liu was also shocked by what he said to the Mudaka. Then the head of the Yan clan knelt and said that their clan was destroyed because Yan Jin attacked the great Mudaka. Others answered that the punishment for attacking the great Mudaka was death. But not only Yan Jin would die, but the entire Yan clan would be destroyed along with him. Yan Jin looked at the great Mudaka and said that he was very sorry for doing that. It was an unforgivable mistake and attack the Mudaka because, in essence, he looked very similar to the tiger who was responsible for Grandpa Lubu's death. Aside from that, Yan Jin said that he considered himself a hero and therefore would not make excuses for his actions. But first, he had one small request to the Mudaka. Yan Jin asked the girl to forgive her clan someone from the crowd called Yan Jin, a true hero. Second elder Yanni stood behind the clan head and with tears in his eyes said that this child seemed to have it. However, being an adult, the elder added that he could never have imagined that Yan Jin could be so bold. And brave at such a young age, Mudaka thought that he might be considered evil if he punished everyone who was considered a hero. The girl said that it was all wonderful and she was very proud of the clan and for having a hero like Yan Jin. Yan Jin looked at the girl with undisguised surprise. But Yan Jin just laughed in his heart. He just wanted to give everything away. So now he had to continue playing this game head on and the clan let out a sigh of relief. Mudaka said that not only would he not punish Yan Jin, but he will also give him a gift. He was going to undergo the Dalu ceremony. Immortal Yan Jin asked what the Dalu ceremony was. Everyone in the crowd was very surprised and whispered something and the clan head enthusiastically shouted that the Mudaka wanted their clan members. Yan Jin joined in the immortal Dalu ceremony. Everyone started to admire the girl and shouted her name, 
And then the girl raised both her hands to the sky and said, That the king daughter of the great Hagalu tribe Kingman bestowed in the name of the Mudaka Grand Sien, Yan Jin Yan clan the ceremony of the immortal Dalu. And may the ancestors bless this hero with their protection. Then people from the crowd came up to Yan Jin and picked him up, and then started throwing him in the air and saying that this was a great job and that he was a real hero. But Yan Jin was not enthusiastic about such actions. He asked them why they were doing it, and the current clan head asked the girl that the ceremony had to be at that level. Then the head of the Yan clan approached Yan Jin when he was released, and said that the Dalu ceremony was a great honor for him, and that their clan had never had a Dalu hero before the clan head told Yan Jin to immediately kneel and thanked the Mudaka. But the girl said that this was completely unnecessary because Yan Jin honestly deserved it, she asked the head of the Yan clan. To prepare everything necessary for the exam, Yan Jin was a little surprised. When he heard about the test, the clan head put his hand on his shoulder and said that the Mudaka ceremony is the highest honor of giving Mudaka, and after Yan Jin passes the test of life and death, he can become a real Dalu hero. And Yan Jin thought about the life and death trials and turned to look at the girl. When Yan Jin saw the grin on her face, he immediately realized that this girl was intentionally setting him up. And Yan Jin had to pass a very difficult test of life and death. Then after that, he went to a river where many sharks were swimming. There, Yan Jin looked down with serious intentions. Yan Jin was well aware that it was very dangerous. And in a state of panic, he saw other people rejoicing and did not understand why they were so happy. When Yan Jin wore the suit, he cursed the young king in his mind, because he understood very well that he wanted him to become a Dalu hero. But for this, he had to pass the test of life and death, and Yan Jin believed that such a reward could be his death, and Yan Jin stood up and asked, Was it too late for him to let go of that girl? The king asked what surrender meant. Then Yan Jin chuckled, and said that this meant giving up on being a hero and remaining an ordinary hero. According to him, this was also a pretty good choice. But one of Uncle Yan Jin's clan members put his hand on Yan Jin's shoulder and told him to stop talking such nonsense, because the Dalu ceremony was a gift that the Mudaka personally gave him. It was a great honor for him. Senior elder Yan Liu added that it was true, and there was no place for the weak in their clan. There was only a place for the second hero. Elder Yanni tried to calm senior elder Yan Lu and told him to listen to what Yan Jin said first. Then the man again told Yan Jin to look into the eyes of every member of their Yan clan. He said that everyone dreamed of him. Then after that, being at Yan Jin's place and undergoing the Dalu ceremony, none of them were afraid for their lives at all. He then added that if Yan Jin refused to pass the life and death test, he would offend the great Nudaka with such actions and ruin the reputation. From the An clan forever, he said that. Even if Yan Jin had saved Mudaka, Grandpa Agulu would never do it. Uncle said he understood very well that it was all because Yan Jin was probably worried about his father. And after that, Benny hugged Yan Jin with one arm and shouted that at the life and death trial ceremony, the sacrifice was a great honor for the hero, and that he was fully confident that Yan Jin's father would be proud of him. The clan head also encouraged Yan Jin and said that he should just do it, and the clan would look after his father and tell everyone in the clan to cheer for their hero, everyone started shouting in joy. The Mudaka said it was time to start, and everyone had to get ready for the ceremony, before pieces of raw meat were thrown into the water, where there were a bunch of predatory sharks, and they all quickly swam towards him, and some even managed to grab a piece of raw meat right in the air. Mudaka looked towards Yan Jin and said that he just needed to catch one Lulu fish, which shouldn't be difficult for a hero like Yan Jin. But after that, everyone in the crowd shouted that the Mudaka was right in what he said. Yan Jin asked why the life and death trials he was told about were just fishing for Mudaka to answer that this Lulu slave was the king of this river, and only the person who can catch him can become a real Dalu hero. Yan Jin smiles and says that this life-and-death trial is too simple. Then Mudaka said if it seemed simple to him, then he could start the clan head said to start the ceremony. People grabbed Yan Jin's arm and took him. Before Yan Jin even had time to recover, he was suddenly thrown into this water by the shark Lulu. 
Yan Jin opened his eyes underwater and saw a huge shark approaching him with its mouth open, and Yan Jin surfaced and started asking to be rescued. And pulled out of the water, the head of the ant clan ordered one of his men to help Yan Jin. The man went to the water and threw the bat there. And after that, Yan's kin caught him, and then asked why he needed this bat. When a shark swam towards him, Yan Jin hit its jaw with the bat with all his might, and it came out of the water. But the warriors immediately approached Yan Jin and blocked him. Yan Jin's way of asking them what they were doing, now, and why don't they let it pass? They repeated that in the clan there was only a place for heroes and no place for weak seniors. Then, after that, Elder Yan Liu pointed his finger at Yan Jin and told him to immediately return and receive the Dalu ceremony bestowed upon him. Then Yan Jin said to Elder Lu that he would not retreat at all, but to catch Lu Lu's fish, and he only needed a weapon. Then, Senior Elder Yan Liu looked towards Yan Jin, and in understanding, said that they had given him a wooden stick weapon. And Yan Jin replies that he is of course a hero, and all, but he still needs a real weapon, otherwise he won't be able to reveal his true talent. The An clan asks the Mudaka if it is appropriate to give Hian Jin some kind of weapon, and the girl gave full approval. Jin Yan Jin thanked the girl and said that he would immediately run to grab the gun himself and run. Then the elder turned to the head of the ant clan and asked how they could let Yan Jin take the weapon himself, since he could just run away from here. And then he didn't know what they would do in this situation, second elder Yan Liu replied. That if Yan Jin really decided to escape and the Mudaka attacked them, then their clan would be in great danger, the head of the Yan clan thought. Sometime after some time, a totem warrior came to them and informed Mudaka that Yan Jin probably ran away because he was nowhere to be found during that time. But the girl said that Yan Jin would not dare do something like that. And right at that moment, Yan Jin appeared immediately apologizing for waiting so long. Yan Jin brought a very long rope with him as people from the clan looked and wondered if he would need such a big rope. They decided that he thought such a rope would help him survive. He thought that Yan Jin was really saving lives and Quick said that Yan Jin was just a coward and that things like that just insulted the entire ancient ceremony. Then the totem warrior asked the Mudaka what Yan Jin was doing. The girl replied that they should wait a moment and just watch it, and soon they will know everything. Yan Jin finally finished what he was doing and threw the hook with a piece of meat in. There was a slightly evil grin on his face. Lulu Fish took the bait, and Yan Jin pulled everyone watching this scene with undisguised shock. Yan Jin pulled the fish to the ground and said he had caught it, and was just as shocked as the others, and asked how Yan Jin managed to do such a thing. And Yan Jin asked if he had ever heard of fishing. The girl asked what fishing was, and Yan Jin explained that the hook he used was made from bighorn deer bone and was also very hard, so that Lulu's fish couldn't bite him. Yan Jin said since the Lulu fish loved meat so much, he only had to throw a piece of raw meat into the water, and the fish would naturally swim to the bait trying to eat the meat. But now he is addicted. All he did was take Lulu's fish out of the water, and then the girl asked him in surprise how he hadn't thought of it before. Then the girl thought that if you use a similar method, then there must be someone who can catch Lulu's fish. Suddenly, anyone shouted that it was wrong, and it was a scam and Quick agreed with him, and added that such devices only disgrace the Dalu ceremony. Then after that, someone from the crowd said that this should be taken into account, even though Yan Jin caught Lu Lu's fish, someone else from the crowd said. That he completely agreed with Kayan Huey, because this was a Dalu ceremony, and the use of such objects was unacceptable. But someone else said that he thought it was quite normal, and also believed that passing the life and death test could be counted, so the head of the Yan clan told everyone to be quiet and immediately asked, What do you think about it? Then the head of the Yan clan looked at Yan Jin and said that he was still a twelve-year-old kid. Then the girl asked, and Yan Jin, if it was true, and it is possible to use this method to catch other fish. Besides fish, Lu Lu and Yan Jin told him that if you know what the fish eats, just adjust the size of the hook, and besides Yan Jin, added that he still caught the fish he was told to do. To catch the girl briefly thought about the fact that the tribe lacked food in winter, because all animals hide, so if you use a similar method for fishing, 
Food problems may be completely resolved. The girl took the rope and decided to try it too. She looked at Yan Jin and asked, Does he just need to throw this rope into the water or does he have to do something else? But the girl threw the rope into the water, but nothing happened. He was a little annoyed, but Yan Jin told him to wait a moment. He looked at Yan Jin and asked if Lulu Fish should not come to him, by itself and Jin again, but in a rougher tone telling the girl to wait a moment, the girl frowned and asked, How long did he still have to wait? Then Yan Jin shouted at her to pull the rope quickly. The girl dragged her feet, and Yan Jin told him to buy time quickly. Finally, after much effort, the girl finally pulled Lu Lu's fish out of the water. A clansman stood and saw all this and was in understanding, and a totem warrior stood beside him and also couldn't understand anything. The girl was happy and shouted that it was just some kind of madness. She was happy that she could do it. Lulu caught a kingfish, and Yan Jin congratulated the girl for having caught a special fish. Currently, the old man from the mountain and the man were still watching everything from afar. The old man says that this is the place, and the predictions finally start to come true, because the fish that is difficult to catch has been caught. Then after that, a crowd stood up. They saw a huge Lulu fish king lying on the ground, and Yan Jin asked if the king Lulu fish really looked like this because it seemed he had seen a similar fish somewhere before. When they decided to grill this fish, Yan Jin was surprised that this fish was not afraid of fire at all. The totem warrior confirmed that it was Lulu fish, because it is not afraid of fire at all, and told Mudaka about it, the girl said this is very good. Because the search for monsters is a very important step in the struggle for the land of prophecy, so it seems that the Kingman tribe they have led the warrior totem, asking what Mudaka means. The girl said that this was the same as the prophecy of defeating the monster and entering the land, the totem prophecy. The warrior said that no one had ever fulfilled this prophecy before. It turns out something has changed now. Suddenly a voice is heard saying that the prophecy is finally starting to come true. Totem warrior asks who is coming. Everyone starts getting scared, expecting what will happen now. Then after that, he told the old man not to come any closer. It was the old man from the mountain who came and the old man suppressed the soldiers with his power, and everyone immediately realized that he was a magician. The Mudaka was shocked that the witch's power was so great that the totem warriors prepared to attack and told the Mudaka to be careful. But the witch suppressed her power, and the totem warrior couldn't even move. The Mudaka ordered everyone to stop immediately, and said that the Mudaka of the king of the tribe greets the very honorable Daluma. Everyone was shocked that it was really Lord Dalumo, and Yan Jin thought that this Dilumu was very powerful, so that even the Mudaka himself had to bow to him, and everyone in the clan bowed before the great Dilumu. Yan Jin looked at the old man's shoulder over there. Is a divination hieroglyph on his shoulder on his jacket, and this causes confusion. Yan Jin thought that this old man might be a real wizard. Mudaka asked the old man what brought Vladika Diluma himself here. Velumu looked at the fish he caught and said, however, that it was quite good to catch such a fish. However, then he said that he came here to give them all a chance. Mudaka asks what the chance is. Delumu says he decided to give them a chance to take part in the mountain and sea trials where the clan members are. However, it made him very surprised by this. Then, after that, Yan Jin remembered about this mountain and sea ordeal and remembered that this Lulu fish was actually a demon from the XY-11 Mountain and Seafish catalog. The description was exactly the same, and Yan Jin also realized that the symbol on the shaman's shoulder contained the legendary symbol of catalog of mountains and seas. He wondered whether the catalog of mountains and seas might have existed long before civilization. Mudaka said that by doing this the old man would waste part of his life but the old wizard replied that he had lived long enough and it did not matter at all whether he would live a few more years or not. Then after he said that this was his main task, then the magician started conjuring oracle hieroglyphs to appear wherever Yan Jin was. Shocked by such power and the head of the Yan clan, asked the Almighty to bless the Yan Jin clan to realize that this power is the power of darkness. And when Yan Jin saw a deer, he realized that he remembered something when he first came to this world. He meets the darkness. He became disgusted even if he just thought about it. And although Yan Jin was not sure what was hiding behind this darkness, he knew for sure that it was nothing good. 
so obviously the only safe place is where the totem shines with power. Totem warriors' strength came from the totem, and to be honest, fighting darkness was their respective responsibility. But Yan Jin couldn't understand why everyone worshipped this wizard who was surrounded by darkness, because when Yan Jin only mentioned darkness, he was almost killed, the old wizard kept conjuring, and maybe he was already sick, and he couldn't stand his person wanting to help his master. But the old wizard said that he was fine. Then the old man said that all heroes who are 18 years old and under can participate in the mountain and sea trials, and everyone who successfully passes the test will receive a new totem pillar. Then the senior elder asked the head of the clan, and if he had heard what the old wizard had just said, and added that they had to pass the test of the mountains and seize them to get the new totem of the pillar. The head of the Yan clan said that he himself understood this very well. The second elder added that this was a very good opportunity, and if everything was successful, then their clan would have as many as two totems, which would increase their power significantly. Old Source says, It was a great opportunity to fight for glory and the clan, and have them fight. Then everyone started cheering, and Yan Jin thought that these cavemen were very scary. Then the old man said that the children who want to join can do so now, then the Mudaka from the king's tribe said he wants to join. He changed into the form of a saber-toothed tiger and jumped into the portal. The old witch thought this junior was in Nudaka, so he was really special. Someone from the crowd shouted that no hero from the Annie clan tribe was afraid of death, and they decided to follow the Mudaka. The old wizard said that the trials of these mountains and landscapes were very dangerous, and those who go there will be responsible for their own lives. Huey said he would go anyway, and Yan Yang also decided to go to the trials of mountains and seas. All the heroes of the Yan clan walked forward for their clan, and Yan Jin stood behind the whole crowd and didn't know what to do. Then Yan Jin decided that he didn't can be compared to all of them, and should just run away. However, he was stopped by Uncle Long. Uncle Long asked why Yan Jin didn't go to the mountain and sea trial. Yanjin said that Dalumu said it was purely a voluntary act. Then Uncle Long said that Yanjin was the Dalu hero, even though the Mudaka had not given him this title, he was still the only one of the entire clan who participated in the Dalu ceremony. Uncle Long put his hand on Yanjin's shoulder and told him not to worry because even if he died, he would still be respected by his descendants. Uncle Long pointed Yanjin to the portal and told him to enter this portal and passed the test of mountains and seas. Yan Jin tried to persuade Uncle Long. However, it was completely useless because the decision had already been made, and it was impossible to refute. Then Huey said that Yan Jin was showing off again, and that he didn't look like a hero at all. An Yong said that was true. Because even at the Dalu ceremony, Yan Jin used his strange equipment, and thus only insulted the Dalu ceremony. Then Yan Hui and Yan Yang exchanged glances and approached Yan Jin, grabbed him, and told him to go with them. Before apologizing to the old uncle, the old wizard thought about the invisible fire and the elusive fish, and about who would still be chosen in ten years, and who will save everyone. Yan Jin crossed the portal and asked what kind of place it was. When Yan Jin looked around, the place looked very familiar to him. However, after that, Yan Jin thought that this was the same place before Yan Yong said that it was darkness, and they were now in darkness, and Huey asked what they should do because they had just awakened their fire, so fighting darkness was clearly a futile act. Gan Yong said that Yan Hui shouldn't be afraid of anything, because all this time, because they are all together, everything will definitely be fine. Huey says that's how it should be, because this is just a test of mountains and seas and not true darkness. Yan Jin stood and thought about the trials of mountains and seas, and about the darkness suddenly heard the voice of an old wizard saying that the king had passed the first test. Everyone looked at each other in disbelief. Yan Jin immediately recognized the voice of the old wizard, and wondered how King Mei managed to overcome the first test so quickly. Then after that, those present could believe that he had overcome the first test so quickly. Suddenly Yan Jin shouted that it was time to attack and quickly ran somewhere and Yan Jin turned to the others and said that they were proud heroes and clansmen, and they weren't. No matter what they have to fight and what darkness they have to go through, they just have to always win. Yan Yang looked at Yan Hue, and the two of them just stood still for a while, and then quickly ran after Yan Jin, 
And Yan Jin thought that since King completed the first task so quickly, it might not be as difficult as it seemed. So even if there are some monsters here, they can be defeated. Suddenly, Yan Jin started to notice that those who had just been running behind him were starting to overtake him, and he found himself at the very end. Then after that, Yan Jin shouted that all these people who were already 18 years old were just mocking him who was only 12 years old. Yan Jin couldn't run anymore. He stopped by a tree and thought that the physical fitness of all these people was too high, and his weak body couldn't keep up with them at all. Yan Jin suddenly looked out from the dust, and then the heroes ran back towards him shouting for him to run as fast as he could. Then someone quickly scattered all the heroes in different directions, and Yan Jin stood by and still couldn't understand anything. At that moment, the person who was called a monster appeared right before his eyes. It was a huge monster. And Yan Jin was even scared, and Yan Jin stood in a stupor and couldn't even move. Then after that, right in front of him was a huge purple monster with big teeth and many spikes on its body. At that time, Yan Jin was so happy that he ran behind everyone and promised himself that he would never follow these cavemen again this time. The monster attacked another hero, and Yan Jin managed to escape to the side. Then, Yan Jin along with the other heroes rushed to escape from the monster, when Yan Jin turned around to see the monster already there. The two of them Yan Jin didn't understand what kind in the world it was in general, and why suddenly there were two monsters. One of the heroes noticed a narrow gap on a nearby mountain, and called everyone to run there. However, suddenly, there were three monsters, and Yan Jin was very aware that one monster was too strong for them. But Yan Jin knew that since King had passed the first test, it meant he had met the monster beast. Then after that, Yan Jin noticed that there were wounds on the body of one of the monsters and realized that he was right. These were scratch marks and were probably left by King when he was there, in the guise of a saber-toothed tiger. Suddenly, Yan Yong suggested that everyone divide into four groups, two groups to distract the monsters and a third group to follow them. In the end, Hue Yan Yang said that recently, two of them had awakened their powers, so they should be able to kill at least one of these scary monsters, Yan Yang said, that everyone had to listen to his orders, and Yan Jin looked at those people in disbelief, and then their faces lit up with fire, and Yan Jin was so surprised it reminded him. Of Ghost Rider, Yan Yang ordered everyone to carry out attacks. Yan Yang watched in awe, as Yin Yang with a fiery face and hands along with Yan Hue continued their attack on the monster. The whole crowd rushed out of the cave to fight the monster of a man who couldn't even get up, crawling to the ground, after everyone, and asked Yan Jin to help him wake up faster, and he assured her that she could still fight. Then after that, Yan Jin stood aside and did nothing. Another man who was probably also injured took this. Men join hands and they go to war together for the glory of the clan. However, Yan Jin did not understand why they did this, and only thought that cavemen were truly very strange. Yan Jin also came out of the cave and looked around his group, fighting two unharmed monsters and two people who had awakened Yan Yang and Yan Hui were fighting one monster on the side, and Yan Jin watched everything happen from the sidelines and didn't know what to do because his team was clearly losing in this unequal battle. Then suddenly, he and Huey attacked one monster and ordered the others to attack. They charged this monster with a large log aimed from one edge and impaled it through the monster screamed loudly in pain. He is very happy that he has dealt with one monster and says that now they have to kill the other two. But Yan Quick shouted that all this was completely useless and another monster had appeared now the three of them again. The monster they killed was split in two, and Yan Yang said that the more they fight with these monsters, the more monsters there are. They become the number of other teams monsters also increases, which is not very good for everyone. Then after that, Yan Yang got angry and shouted that he didn't believe that they wouldn't be able to defeat all those terrifying monsters. That Yan Jin was still watching from the sidelines, and did not interfere in the battle in any way. He only thought that the fact that these monster beasts continued to increase was beyond any understanding. Then after that, a large number of monsters were seen surrounding the heroes of the Yan clan. One monster attacked Yan Hui, 
Another attacked Yan Yang. They were lying on the ground. Many of them could no longer fight. But other people held spears firmly in their hands. Yan Jin said that such phenomena were beyond the bounds of science. Although he had heard of Paridami, creatures in this case should not do it. Exactly the same. And Yan Jin added that such a thing was not in line with energy conservation at all. And these words made him seriously think about energy conservation. Suddenly, Yan Jin rushed to run somewhere, and Huey said that he knew very well from the start that Yan Jin was truly a coward and would run away immediately. After a good opportunity, Yan Yang told Yan Hui not to worry about Yan Jin because they alone and without his help would be able to overcome these monsters perfectly. But Yan Jin actually realized one thing that both monsters, when branched out, became equal in strength to the most ordinary warrior. Now Yan Jin knew that after the separation, the power of the monsters was also divided between them, and they became much weaker than before, which was meaningful. If they were subdivided, their strength would be weaker even than Yan Jin's children. As the fight continues in Anhui, asks Yan Yang what they will do now. Yan Yang replied that because they were true heroes, they couldn't back down, they had to win this battle. Young Ian was ready to do anything for the sake of the clan and was about to attack the monsters. That was when he suddenly saw Yan Jin trying to do something, and Yan Yong asked Yan Hui what Yan Yang was trying to do. Yan Jin said something about the principle of leverage, but it seemed that no one understood what he was talking about, so their faces didn't look very pretty. Yan Yong turned to Yan Jin and said, that if they attacked, the number of monsters would increase, and that someone who had never participated in a battle would not be able to understand it. But Yan Yang said that he needed to look higher and see further. And Yan Jin told everyone to be careful, because it might rain soon, and Yan Jin started rolling a large number of stone balls down the mountain, which rolled straight towards the monsters. One of the men said there was no room left to defend himself. This time, so they just had to lay down their lives. And Yan Jin jumped and then turned around, but then, after that, Yan Jin saw this monster right in front of him and thought that a real hero would face it bravely. Danger and battle are the fate of a hero. But after that, when the monster approached one of the heroes, the man screamed and threw his staff. However, suddenly, Yan Jin managed to grab the thorny monster and attack the monster with his stick. The man in the back happily shouted that it was his cane, while the monster became more aggressive, and Yan Jin could no longer fight alone with it, so he shouted to the others to join him. The monster growled menacingly, but Yan Jin sent him away with a growl and hit him again a few times with the spiked bat, and he asked how this could happen, and Yan Yang was surprised that Yan Jin suddenly became so strong. The crowd of heroes stood by and watched Yan Jin fight the monster finally, all the injured monsters were completely defeated. And Yan Jin stood with a serious face looking at his victim. Yan Jin said that he would leave this monster for another hero, and he goes to face other monsters. Two monsters stood in front of the crowd and looked at the heroes of the clan. And the heroes looked at them. However, everything turned out to be exactly as he assumed. It is the last generation that is the weakest. But the first one was strong enough. Yan Jin met the last generation monster and looked at his victim with a smile on his face. Then, Yan Jin decided to chase this monster away, and the monster ran away. The voice made another announcement. This time, Yan Jin of the Yan clan had passed the first test. Ian Young asked with dissatisfaction and didn't understand what was happening here, and he and Huey said not to ask him, because he was very tired and all he wanted now was to rest. But there was still a huge monster in front of them. Then after that, someone shouted loudly that at this time King Mudaka had undergone the second test. He stood up and there were some strange stone statues around him. In the center, there was a stone statue of a man sitting on a throne. The girl changed her appearance and turned from a man into a saber-toothed tiger. She rushed to the statue. But as soon as he started moving, the trap reacted and a huge rock flew into it. He but the white, saber-toothed tiger continued running, and Yan Jin landed and fell straight to the ground, so that a cloud of dust appeared. Yan Jin didn't really understand where he was, but it seems like this place is the clan entrance. Yan Jin saw the stone figure and the king standing between them, and Yan Jin was very happy to meet the girl, and with an enthusiastic smile on his face, 
hurriedly ran towards her. The girl heard it and turned around and shot Yan Jin a threatening look. Yan Jin thought that the king still had not passed this test. That meant it was very difficult for the old wizard to pay attention to everything that happened at that time. His disciple told him that after his master received the fragments of mountains and seas, no one had passed the second stage yet. The king is the strongest of all the examinees. So his disciple asked whether it was appropriate to give him instructions. The old man was still thinking about the chosen one and about the fact that ten whole years had passed. Raja is still trying to pass the test. But when killing one stone statue, another new statue will appear, and the girl said that she will kill ten of them, and then see if at least one of them can be reborn. The girl started using some kind of magic, and Yan Jin didn't understand what she was doing now. The girl used the secret technique of the Witch King, protect the blood vines, and aim to explode the statue statue. Then at this time, it was seen that the girl was fighting hard with the statue. Some of them were riding horses. They attacked the girl in response. The king tied some of them up with vines, arms, legs, even heads fell off. But they were reborn and gathered in the king's section, didn't know what to do now. Then the king closed his eyes and tried to concentrate. He realized that as per the grand scheme, all the soldiers were now ready to attack him. But there was only one of them who didn't move, namely the man sitting on the throne, Yan Jin, opened his eyes and looked at him carefully. Yan Jin was currently still standing behind the girl and watching all her actions from behind. Beside the man carefully checked the location where there were stone statues of soldiers and came to a conclusion. That he had seen a similar scene somewhere. Before suddenly, Yan Jin saw that the girl was trying to kill the stone soldier again. He used Vine's foreign blood, one dragon spear, and headed straight towards the soldiers. And after that, he hit them from above and they started to break into pieces again. Soldiers on horses were also attacked by her. Then the girl looked at the man sitting on the throne. He was guarded by two more Batu warriors. With a sword, Yan Jin did not hide his surprise. He admired how strong and intelligent the Maiden King was, again taking the form of a saber-toothed tiger and rushing forward. When the king took off the head of the stone man sitting on the throne, everyone heard the voice of the old wizard again. The king had passed the second stage. Yan Jin looked at everything with a smile. The old wizard and his apprentice were still paying attention to everything that happened in the mountain and sea trial, the wizard disciple said. That this was truly incredible news that after ten full years, someone had successfully passed this test. His student turned to the old wizard and says that this girl Raja is definitely the most chosen one. But after that, they looked for the old wizard to think for a moment and then said that the student should not rush to such a conclusion because there was still a third stage that had not been passed. Then after that, his disciple asked if the old shaman thought that the king would not be able to pass the third stage. The old wizard said that no one had been able to pass the third stage for more than ten years, so king must be talented, but maybe not him. Then the student said to his teacher that the child named Yan Jin was the only student except king who was able to pass the first stage and proceed to the second stage. The old shaman said, Yan Jin was the son of the clan, and his disciple asked the master why he didn't just let Yan Jin go home, because he had only passed the first stage, and luck was no longer on his side. Next exam, then, the old wizard replied that sometimes luck could become strength, and since Yan Jin had reached the second stage, they should just let him continue and pass the exam. The student agreed with the old teacher, it was time for Yan Jin to pass the exam. Then at this time, Yan Jin stood up and carefully and considered his next course of action. And Yan Jin realized that as long as he stood in the middle and did not step over the line, the monsters on both sides did not move. As Yan Jin took one step forward, a stone knight with a spear and on a horse immediately headed towards him. Yan Jin shouted that he would die but managed to duck, and his rider jumped over him on the other side, the soldier wanted to attack Yan Jin again, and Yan Jin shouted again. Ben Yan Jin suddenly sat up and stopped making the slightest movement. He just looked around and studied the current situation he was in now. Then after that, Yan Jin started to think about everything because it seemed like all this was familiar to him. That Yan Jin remembered that the horse moved straight, and then diagonally, and the elephant moved twice diagonally, and at that moment Yan Jin realized, 
that this entire arrangement could be the most ordinary chessboard. Yan Jin was still sitting with his eyes closed amidst the stone figures of the old wizard and his apprentice still watching the journey. Yan Jin, the disciple, said that this kid had been in the second stage for quite some time, but he didn't budge. He asked what Yan Jin would do. The old man sat thinking and silent. Then he asked what was wrong with the king. The disciple said that he had reached the third stage and was still sitting and not moving from his place. He said that he just needed to recover his magic power that he had used up. In the second stage, the old wizard said it was very good that he was still young and not in a hurry. Then the old man said that they still had to wait for Yan Jin and see what he would do next. Then after that, he sat down and thought that chess should be a game for two kings instead. However, that meant the goal had to be the king. But there was no king on one side, and Yan Jin exclaimed that he finally understood everything. Suddenly, he was almost hit by one of the soldiers with a sledgehammer. But fortunately, Yan Jin managed to jump to the side in time, and Yan Jin shouted that he would try his best, and then told the statue with a sledgehammer to move aside a rider with a spear wanted to attack Yan Jin. But he managed to dodge again, and the rider jumped over him. The disciple noticed Yan Jin and said that this kid didn't even do it. He understands what to do and where to go. So his luck might end here. Then after that, he ran forward and stepped onto the tile with the letters on it, and the chess game began, and Yan Jin stood in his place with a satisfied smile. The students, who were still watching, were very surprised, and decided to report what happened here to the old wizard. The old witch looked at Yan Jin with summing understanding and said, that the system had changed for some reason. He asked the student why this could happen. The student answered that he did not know how it happened, and he had never seen anything like it before. The old shaman asked how long ago it had been, and his disciple told him that it happened less than a minute ago. Then the old shaman said that they should just watch and wait to see what happens. It would happen that he and Yan Jin moved their horses to the fourth row and then moved the cannons to the third column and then captured the elephant himself. Yan Jin then said that by standing here, he felt like he could observe the entire board and could control everything from here, where Yan Jin said that playing chess was really cool, and he was very sorry because he could only play one round. Then Yan Jin said to hand over the king to him, and the piece moves again. Then he shouted for the king to be captured, and now there was nowhere to run. Yan Jin was able to pass the second test. The apprentice and the old wizard were still watching his apprentice saying that this kid's luck could be very good. Then the old wizard replied that even he had never encountered such an unusual strategy and asked if his student really believed it. That it was just pure luck, the old wizard told his apprentice to leave and announced that Yan Jin had passed the second test, then like a king entered the final third stage of the mountain and sea test. Then after that, the disciple went to announce that Yan Jin was able to pass the second exam and would be able to reach the finals of the mountain and sea exam. Currently, everyone in the Yan tribe was waiting for the mountain and sea exam to end. Then after that, someone was seen telling the clan head to wait for some people to come out of the portal. And it was known that among them were Yan Hui and Yan Yang. The head of the clan asked them what was in the mountain, and sea test Ian Huey answered that they had failed and Yan Yang added that they had not even made it past the first stage. Yan Yang bowed a log in front of the clan head and said that it was with great regret that they did not have enough time. If anything, in at least a little more things could be completely different. The old head of the Yan clan frowned and said that there was absolutely nothing to worry about as the trials of the mountains and seas were quite difficult and lasted as long as they all lasted. This exit was already a great success. Then the Yan clan head asked who was able to pass the first test and Yan Jin looked at his clan head and said that Yan Jin was able to pass the examination. The Yan clan chief was very surprised and said that Yan Jin was still very young. So it is unknown whether he will be able to go further and whether he will survive until the end. Then the person said that Yan Jin was just lucky to meet a weak monster during the journey. The first stage he said that Yan Jin still had not awakened his firepower and no matter how lucky he was, he would still be useless without his skills. The clan head said that Yan Yang might be right, but passed the first stage. The test of the mountain and the view is already very impressive. The portal starts to close and everyone starts to panic. 
The old witch announced that the Kingman clan and the Yanjin clan were moving to the final stage of the mountain and sea trial. So now the portal will close. Yan Yang said that it was impossible for the Yan clan head to be surprised that Yan Jin could go to the final stage of the mountain and sea trials. The others were no less shocked than the others. Clan head and Yan Jin moved through the portal again and fell to the ground. He started to get very angry and asked why it was impossible to move him properly. The king was very surprised by Yan Jin's appearance and asked how he got to this stage, and Yan Jin sat on the ground and looked around. Then he said that the third stage was very gloomy. Then he looked at the girl and said that it was a very interesting question as to how she got to this stage. Yan Jin said that to destroy the great formation of warriors required a lot of strength, the girl thought about it, and looked at Yan Jin. Yan Jin said that the king must have seen for himself that the gatekeeper in the middle was the key to breaking the formation. The girl said that between the formations, she could feel a huge magical power from that place. Besides the rest of the soldiers protecting the gate guard, Yan Jin laughed and said that this was what she expected from the Mudaka, and after that he turned out to be very perceptive. He then said that unlike him, he didn't have sharp eyes, and that's why he can't use brute force like that. Yan Jin said that when he met the cannon, he had nowhere to run, and therefore had to hit him with my bare hands afterwards which he himself destroyed. The girl looked at him with a little anger and didn't really understand. Yan Jin, meanwhile, continues to tell his story that then a horse ran towards him and he had no choice but to fight because he was a true hero and never backpedaled anywhere. Then he turned to the girl and said that he did not even imagine how dangerous it would be for her because she was surrounded by horse soldiers. Weapons from all sides, though it didn't scare him at all, so he continued fighting. Then he said that after all that, he was finally able to throw a few punches at his opponent, then beat them half to death and beat them until they started crying and calling for their mothers. And the king was so frightened that he knelt down and began to beg his opponent for mercy. Him but Yan Jin did not waste a single second and killed the gatekeeper. So she passed the second stage of the girl still continuing to listen to Yan Jin's story. And he said that during the entire second stage, no one could touch the hem of his clothes. Yan Jin showed him his clothes as evidence and asked him to look at the fact that he actually had no damage at all to his clothes. The king frowned and Yan Jin said that he assured him that he could leave behind all the monsters they would encounter on the way. Him because this is a true hero's business and he shouldn't even care about this matter. The girl looked at Yan Jin and then pointed her finger forward. Then he told him that the third stage in front of them was just a giant egg whose shell suddenly started to crack, and Yan Jin and King stood by and looked at him, not understanding what they should do now. They moved away and hid behind a stone slab to hide from possible blows. The eggshell broke and a large snake with red eyes appeared. Yan Jin looked and asked what it was. The snake hissed menacingly and headed towards Yan Jin and the King. They stood up and saw the snake through this snake. They saw all the monsters from the previous stage. Yan Jin hid behind the stone slab again and said that it was certain it's over now, and this time they will both really die here. The king greatly calmed the snake while it was still there. Then after that, when he saw the blue monster, he told him. He thought this snake monster was one of the ancient monsters. The old wizard replied that he couldn't even suggest that will be the final stage of the mountain and sea trials. Yan Jin shouted that he was like a true fearless hero meeting all the monsters and asked who wanted to fight him first. But when the snake approached, Yan Jin was a little scared. The king came forward and Yan Jin said it was because he wanted it, and he just had to let it be first. The girl tried to use the king's secret technique of bleeding vines on the snake to strangle the snake, but it didn't help when the snake broke free from its shackles. Then the king pushed the girl aside. The snake wanted to hit the girl with its long tail, but the king managed to dodge it, and the snake's tail crushed the stone lying next to him into small pieces. The snake hissed again, and already turned its mouth towards the king lying on the ground, and everyone was watching with anticipation the disciple and the old wizard were very serious at that moment. Yan Jin thought the king might die now, but fortunately the king managed to use Thorn's bloody rose shield to protect himself from the monsters. Then the king decided to use one clash of blood spike. He attacks the snake with his power, but the snake was still alive. 
Then King repeated the same thing again. And besides that, he used the bloody thorn vine. The disciple noticed and thought that King had extraordinary strength. Yan Jin thought the same way the girl thought, that he had been able to defeat the snake monster but after taking a closer look. Then after that, he realized that was not the case the snake hit the king with its tail again, and he flew back. Then the student said that even such powerful magic did not harm this monster. Then he saw that Yan Jin was also trying to do something, and he became very curious to know what he wanted. Yan Jin said that everything was exactly as he thought free, just relying on brute force. So he decided it was time to use his secret weapon. Yan Jin suddenly took out an arrow from behind his back and said that in most cases the weakness of such creatures is their eyes, and that the true power of an engineer is manifested in such moments of life. But after that, Yan Jin took him and calculated the wind trajectory with one eye closed, and calculated the bullet's trajectory, so that it didn't miss and hit the target. Then it was said that there was absolutely nothing in this world that could not be solved with an arrow, and finally, Yan Jin released his arrow, but unfortunately he missed and did not hit the snake's eye. But a little above his eyes, so embarrassingly, he ran back. But then he decided that it was always necessary to use two arrows, and decided to wait for the snake to crawl closer to him. So he could attack Yan Jin's aim, and say that if he didn't manage to hit the target after the second arrow, then there was always a third. Yan Jin shot the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and ten arrows. Then after that, a thousand arrows shot.